Hello everyone, welcome back to Hooked on Classics. This is uh, The Adventures of TC Part 22, or Adventure 22. Um, now I am attempting to replace the new replacement ball joint as you saw in Part 1 of Adventure 22. Um, this is split, so I've never done one of these before. And there is a ring around the top here and there's a ring around the bottom there and that's the replacement ring and it's very much like you'd find on a key ring but much more flexible so um, I have seen on a previous video online that this ring is fine to stay where it is so what I'll do is I'll fit that later but we need to get the original one off of here and it doesn't matter if I damage the boot Gotta find the gosh split all round like the split there as well. So this can't have been massively high quality, can it? Let's try and get in there and hook. Oh there we go. It worries me about trying to fit the other one on. I don't want to put a puncture hole in the uh, the new one but then again I do have two because I bought a set um, so I don't think we should this is still really really good quality good condition it's um it's very stiff still so that's a that's a bonus all right let's get this thing off of here got still plenty of grease in there that's a good sign well that comes off quite easy yeah, that's cake, caked in grease still. So that's good, 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 good. Right, let's wipe my fingers a bit. Try and get this middle bit straightened up as best we can, because we don't want it slopping around, do we? That's about right. We don't want to wipe out any grease either. Okay, so let's try and get... I think these are universal, but I mean, it, I did buy them on eBay and it did say that they were for Mark 3, 4 and 5 Cortinas, so. Might be worth buying another set of backups just in case they're needed. Okay, so that's on. Just measure that up. That looks slightly narrower. Right, it's going on, so I can't argue that. Can't argue that at all. Okay, so let's get the hook under there. Hopefully you can see There we go, pop. Okay, so now the fun bit is to get this on. So get the that one down the very bottom first, I would say. And slowly feed it round. Should I get rid of this tissue? I think I might. And I almost used this to cut this one off, but I don't really think it's needed. Well, it's not now because it's off, isn't it? So there we go. Push it down and around. Oh, careful. There we go. Job done. It's on. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be that easy. So there we are. Fixed. So next job is to put that on the lower arm of the Cortina. Um, I still need to decide whether I am going to replace the bushes now um, or after I come back from the uh, Cortina City. I am two mines. I have borrowed the uh, spring compressor. I will put a picture in now. 
that I uh, hired from the Mark III Owners Club. I'll put a link in the description for them. Um, they're definitely worth going and seeing if you own a Cortina or even if you're just interested. Um, yeah, I have a set of springs um, which I could put in the car but I don't know if they are the same length as the ones that are in the car already. And the ones in the car already have some serious strength to them as you would have seen from the previous part of the video. Um, so enough waffling on to the next part of the video. In the shed we have the, the prop shaft. I uh, managed to get the uh, ball joint off the end. I've marked the tape there so I know where the nut goes and how far it all goes on. Uh, so now we need to put the boot on. Um, there is liquid leaking out of here um, but it, it doesn't look very nice and I bought some EP90. Um, you can't really see that but it's dripping anyway. It's ending up on that rag so that rag could be thrown away. Um, inside here we have EP90 and the access plate is there. I won't turn it because obviously I've got it on the bench vice. Um, that plate comes undone um, I watched a video on YouTube the other night and it shows an MGB, go with an MGB doing the same thing. And this steering rack looks almost identical. It's probably this, like this, uh, just like a generic standard design. So there's uh, a couple of shims inside there. And when you turn the steering in there, it forces oil into both bellows. I found that these are called bellows, um, or also known as gaiters. But what I'll do, considering I don't think there's much in here because when I took this boot off it was split, hardly any oil inside it, so it's going to be minimal anyway. But when you do fill that up, um, you have to leave the cap off and you have to work the steering left and right to spread the liquid around, or the, the grease, the oil, sorry, and uh, just so you can make sure it's all good and you can top it up at a decent level. And that's probably never been opened in like since it's since it was built, so uh, it, it's definitely worth doing. Um, so what I'll do is I'll get the the boot on here, um, all this along here. Once I've done that, I did give this a wire wheeling, but it, it didn't come up, up all that well. So I will be spraying it with some etch primer. So once I've got that boot on, I'm gonna get it outside. I've got some cardboard. I need to clean up some of these gaps in here, but it's all going to be painted up and cleaned up and uh, yeah, made to look lovely. And I can get finally get the poly bushes on. I almost forgot. Um, I, I remember buying a set of these uh, when I was working on the car up, up the line a bit and um, I couldn't remember where they are, so I looked in here, couldn't find them in any of these boxes, nothing, nowhere. Went to the garage where TC is, nothing up there either, couldn't find it. And then my mum decided to come and stay for Easter. So I'm tidying up downstairs, moving stuff around, and what did I find? But in the meantime, I'd ordered another set. So at least I've got some in backup. Bendy. Second part of this little video. I don't actually I don't know if it's gonna be little or not. It could be. It could be bolting big things back into the car. Anyway, as you can tell, these are the bushes from the front uh, steering rack. So we have the big original and the poly. And we have the little original and the poly. Now they are slightly different design. You've got like a, a shape at the bottom there which is not replicated on that one and that one looks pretty much identical. Now that one has been cut off center as you can see. So what we need to do is cut this one off center in kind of roughly the same place but not too far across because it could cause it to be weaker on one side and possibly move even though it's held down by a clamp um, I would still prefer to go the same way as this, so 
if we hold it like so would it be easier that way no it wouldn't really, I don't think it would really make much difference this is actually it does seem slightly wider doesn't it so that's the correct aspect ratio so should I mark this with a mark pen I think that might be a wise choice one moment Okay, so we have a marker. It's not sharp here, I'm afraid. Right, so let's hold that as steady as possible. Oh, mark it there. Okay, so that is where we want our cut. So that's the wider end. So the more narrow end. We want the cut If I get this wrong, I get it wrong Yeah, but slightly offline That's fine because I can basically go Well, I don't have to go exact, so There we go. Right, let's see if I can make a hash of this. I'm not going to be using that. I don't think it's going to be strong enough. So I've got my good friend Stanley. Let's move these out of the way. God, this is quite tough stuff to cut through. Wow. Blimey. This is tough. Jeez. Whoa. Oh, sorry. I think I'm going to have to put this in the bench vise to cut it. This is or something. This is really, really tough. Jeez. Okay. Um, this might call for some snips, maybe. And the snips are up in the garage, in the toolbox. At least I think they are. Could be a case of using snips. I mean this one, this feels extremely tough as well. Um, try and get a rough idea of where to cut with this one. I'm just going to mark it. I might as well mark it now. That is really tough. I'm going to have to cut that and then come back to you. I'm making the nice orange filthy. It's not as if it's going to make a huge amount of difference. 
Right, so I'm going to cut there and we are going over to just past hmm interesting try and cut along there that's actually quite low so I'm going to go down there aren't I really it's going to be really close to it yeah but I need something much sharper than this Stanley blade unless the blades on its way out I'll look into this got it everyone um, I found a brand new Stanley blade so there we go that one's done so let's try and get through the rest of this one yeah all my Stanley blades are absolutely shot apart from this one um, I got given a pack but I don't know where they all went so let's try this again shall we come on there we go please don't go off centre going even something like this is it's quite tough where's the split there it is don't have to start a fresh cut that'd be first annoying I think I might need a modern Stanley blade. This one, for some the button up here, you can catch it with your finger, and you end up with the part of the blade disappearing back into the casing. I'm getting there. I think I'm slightly offset offline, but you know, it's uh, gonna be it. <sighs> okay, so I think, yeah, I've got through that bit there. It's just that final bit, because this blade is not that long. I haven't sliced my fingers open yet. There we go. Ding ding. Hello. Welcome to Hooked On Classics. Oh, Simone, what are you doing? You have a steering rack on your kitchen counter. I know I have a steering rack on the kitchen counter, and uh, I'm going to fit these poly bushes but firstly I'm going to take off the, the, the newspaper and the masking tape um, one thing I didn't do I didn't get around to painting the um, little arms on the end of the steering I uh, didn't really think it would be a good idea but I might rue that one. Um, so let's cut through the masking tape so we can gently, and then we can get it off of the the rubber the, the rubber gaiters. This this end one, I don't know if you can see that or not. Can you? Yeah. Um, this one is new, um, as you would have seen in the previous video, or not. If you haven't seen it, feel free to go back and have a look. But actually, no. See, I even forget my own stuff. I forget that I didn't film it. 
So, no, I didn't film this. But as you can see, it's all nice and black. I filmed it before I painted it, left it overnight a couple of days. Um, let's get this end off. I will be, uh, I'll be putting these in the boot of the Rover to take up to the Cortina tomorrow. And fingers crossed it will be a, a nice sunny day. Now, I was going to paint up the, st the steering box, I think it is. Um, but I didn't really... There's so many parts here that I really didn't see any beneficial reason for it. And it's aluminium anyway. Let's cut that. Um, and it's got lots of little gaps in it and there's still bits of grease in there and I'm not a professional. There we go. Let's lift that and put that back on there. So there is quite a bit of dirt on the ends, but I'm not too worried, to be honest, because I think this just looks, I think it looks great as it is. Um, one moment, I need to wash my hands. Okay, so I'm going to turn the rack slightly so you can see the underside of it. So that there, that arm there is the underside and that rests against the, uh, the clip as does this flat bottom here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grease up all around here and this flat, flat, flat face here. I might move you in a moment so you can see a bit more. I know the sunlight can cause a bit of a problem but I'm trying to work so the sunlight is on what I'm working on. It's not as wise to point the camera towards the sunlight as I learnt. So I can always let's just move those a moment. Let's pick you up and move you. I will have to uh, Rejig and check what I can see. Let's move the Haynes book. Yep, you can see fine. Okay. Keep picking things up and making my hands dirty when I'm supposed to be using some grease. Um, and I don't really want to get bits in it, even though I think there's some bits in it anyway. Okay, so. Let's put some grease on the bottom there. Let's move that out of the light. I'm going to try and get some grease in between these two components because um, when I was cleaning it up I did notice there was quite a lot of uh, nasty inside in here. So the more grease I can get inside there, I'm guessing would be a good idea. I've not seen um, many videos on a steering rack for the Cortina Mark III, four or five, because I think they're all very similar to each other. So let's put some grease around the shaft of the rack. If you can hear crunching, it's just my cats eating. Okay, so wipe my fingers on a rag. Okay, so my thinking is that the it goes that way round. So let's pop it there. I think that's right. I hope that's right. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And that fits over quite quite snugly. I'm hoping that is correct. Okay. The other side. Quick cup of tea, I think. I had to stop for a moment. Mm. Merchandise is available. See link below. Um, okay, so let's grease this end, shall we? 
Now I don't know if I'm going to need quite a lot. I don't know. We will have to see because it will just splurge out the sides anyway. But it's going to kind of protect it, isn't it? I don't think we're going to need to grease the inside of the uh, the bush. Or the poly bush, shall I say. These pollies definitely cannot eat crackers. Probably want a cracker. Right, there we go. That's that. Where's the cloth to wet my finger? This uh, lithium grease is great stuff. It really is. I, uh, I'm almost down to a quarter of a tub. And I've had that thing for about 10 years. Okay, let's squeeze this over. Hang on. quite tough. Come on. I think I might have to trim this. Look at that. That is really thick there. So it's very possible I'm going to have to trim it. thought it would have gone in, but, you know, they're aftermarket parts, aren't they? So it looks like... Yeah, I'm going to have to trim this down. Awkward. Right. I will be back. OK, so I've trimmed stuff down. I even used this one, actually. Uh, this comes with a, a boot kit for modern cars and, you know, even, even for other stuff it comes in useful. Right, let's flip this over a bit. I've trimmed some down. I may need to remove some more. So, let's see what happens if I try and force it over. No, it's still very, very... Yeah, I need to get rid of some more across the bottom here. The top seems to be alright. Um, we guess the bottom end that needs more cutting off. I'll come back. So, um, yeah, I've cut off quite a bit and there's a few raised edges on here as well. So, uh, there's a little bit there, I may have to take that down. So, let's try this again. That, the other one went on so e so much more easily. Come on, let's... Hang on, that's the flat end, isn't it? still way too fat. Well this side's gone on all right. Okay let's hold it like that and see if I can just persuade it a bit. There we go. Right there we go. Bit of persuasion I think is what was needed there. Hopefully the uh, bracket um, will go on okay. I need to clean those up, paint them um, they're still in a relatively icky condition, but uh, yeah, on the whole, I think these should go on quite well. I don't know if I need to modify um, this one on, on this side because it's not sitting very well. I'll move you slightly so you can see. Um, it's still, hang on, let's flip it over. It's not fitting quite perfectly, but I suppose once once I've got it on the car, it should be fine. There's a bit of an op optical illusion here because you've got this metal bracket. And I keep thinking it's got to go in behind it, but I don't think it does. It wouldn't fit anyway. This is way too thick. And it wasn't like that when I took it off. It wasn't through that hoop, but it's, it's a bit of an illusion where it might you know, go through there and hook in and then sit in position, but it doesn't. Anyway, this is bit is done. I'll be moving on to another section of film. Um, so I'll see you on that part. With these, I'm going to put some rust killer around the internals and around the external um, pieces which are exposed. So that'll help kill the rust a bit. Um, I won't be paint, well, I might paint them actually. Um, not overly sure just yet. Um, I think I will.
So what do we have here? We have both the wheel hubs, we have the little tray of um, part bits there, which we need for bearings and oil and such, grease even. We have um, a pot of LM2 lithium grease and we have the cat keeping chart and eye. So we will get on with fitting these now. Uh, I'm going to move in front of the camera. Uh, I don't know if it's going to affect the light. Hopefully not. So something to kneel on uh, while, I'm, while I'm working. A big hammer. Not too big because I don't want to break anything. Actually, I don't think I need gloves. Force of habit. Okay, so the bigger um, bearing. Oh, there's a cat hair in there. How did Georgie get in there? Um, this is the bigger bearing. This is the original. And there is some colour dis distortions and scratches. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been there a long time. I know in the previous video I did get a bit confused about things, but there was a bit of a time delay on certain parts of the video and I'd forgotten about, I'd say, said certain things. Um, we have the seals here as well. Um, so the, I don't, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yes, they do go in the back there. Uh, so when I took the old ones out, the disc was still here. So that was kind of deceiving me. So we'll leave those in here for now. And we'll open up. These brand new bearings. Look at those. I haven't, that's the first time I've taken these out of the bag. Very smooth. Very smooth. So what I'll be doing, I will be packing these full of grease. Uh, but the first thing to do will be, because what I'll do is I'll put these back in here. Because I can't fit the roller bearings until I've finished with the... the um, Got my words now. Stub axle. Can't fit those until I finish with the stub axle. And the stub axle needs to stay in the car until I've removed the spring. So, what I always do, even with the motorcycles, lithium grease. On the outside of the bearing, even though it came greased already. Don't need too much of course. We'll put some inside here. If you want to see some fittings of motorcycle bearings, feel free to have a look for the um, Project Buddy videos. The Kawasaki, sorry, Yamaha RS125 DX. Um, if anyone out there is interested in motorcycles, feel free to go and have a look. So you want to go wide end in first, because they are tapered of course. And what we want is the old bearing being the opposite way round. So when you put it on there, you have a wider circumference to hit. A wider, wider area to hit. So let's give this a try, shall we? I was wrong. I can put these bearings in because they will be held in by the seal. So yeah, 
let's do that shall we I've um I've packed these before and I'm sure you've seen it before um it's not um sure I, yeah it's not something I think you really need to see not on this one I've done it on the bikes so uh yeah I'm gonna pack these with grease now and then put them in but what we're gonna do is we're gonna fit this one now so I use a little bit of the grease that uh, came with the uh, with the kit just to smear around the edges it's already smeared in here anyway so uh, yeah just a little smear this grease is not very nice so my thinking is like the same with the other bearing seals I've used before and they just push fit, they just push into the into its home <sighs> might need a small tap with a, a hammer just to help it seat so now that one is not going to come out that one is fine so unfortunately we all make little mistakes okay so I can flip this one over now let's move that let's give the work surface a wipe down probably getting little flakes of paint from the masking paper masking tape oops okay so there was a little bit of an incident with these uh, hubs but um, these bearings will go in they'll be fine okay so let's get that bit out of the way a little bit more lithium I think Same principle as last time. I want to put some on the inside there, don't I? That would help. Okay. There we go. That's seated. So I should have a socket that will fit this. I mean, I may not need to use the um, the original bearing. Or would this one fit? It certainly will. That's perfect. Just feeling around the very edge to see if there's a small gap. Nope. That is now seated. So what I'll do is I'll move on to this one. I'll get this one done. And then, uh, yeah, we can do something else.
uh, we have new bolts for the top of the shock mounts. This is the new one, and as you can probably tell, that's the old one. Quite a difference. So these new bad boys are going in. Um, these are the parts for the hubs, or the stub axle, sorry. These are the stub axles. Um, I cleaned these up in previous part of the video. Crikey, I've done that up tight. Um, yeah, so these will be all being cleaned up. These were looking just like that. They were quite crusty. Uh, next thing I will show you is in the back of the Rover. Let's go and have a look at the Rover. Let's bring this out. I have new poly bushes on the uh, on this. Let's lift it out of the car. There we go. And then place it on the ground where it was before. Oh, not on a box. Um, place it down. Don't damage any of the paintwork. There we go. So if you saw the act, the uh, this before, it was in much poorer condition. There you go, nice clean paint, nice new bushes. Um, I have the metal clips to go, the metal brackets to go over these, and the bolts, which I cleaned up as well. Um, the steering column is in two pieces. One obviously goes from the engine bay into the car. This is the replacement. Um, if you saw the video where I've taken the other one out, this was made of rubber and it was completely split. Now this is a completely different material. I'm not exactly what sure, sure, what sure? I'm not exactly sure what material it is, but it's much more firm and it's got a bit more rigidity to it. So that's good. And I got a new bolt in there as well because the, well it's not new, it's the original one for this piece. The bolt in the other one was so chewed up there was hardly any thread left. Um, these backing plates, the original ones on the car were so crusty and rotten well, one of them was wor more. One of them was worse than the other. The worst side was the passenger side over there. These these two were sent to me from um, a friend who's also got a Mark III. I rubbed these down with a wire wheel, not fully, but I treated them with zinc primer. I've treated everything with zinc primer, and then painted it with um, stone stone guard paint. So hence why it doesn't have a shiny finish. It has a matte finish, and I quite like it. So what we're going to do now, we're going to start putting things back on and the first thing I'll be doing is putting in these new bolts so they need to be copper greased before I put them in. Right then, so we have our new bolt. So the other side of this where the screwdriver is. Hopefully I can get it in line, or keep it in line. Oh yeah, that's the end of the screwdriver. I need to kind of wiggle it. There we go. I'm on the fuel line. I need to release the jack slightly to get the lower part of the bolt and the part of the bolt in. Oh, it's gone too far. So I'm in the way. Hammer time! There we go. Brand new bolt in. Where's the nut? There it is. Brand new shiny nut. Right, let's get this one tightened up, shall we? Next job I'm going to do, um, I'm going to be taking all this tape off here, or paper even that uh, doesn't need to be on here anymore. Okay, so the 
the next one is to put the the plate on the front here. So uh, yeah, let's do that, shall we? So first thing I'm going to do some copper grease. I'm going to put this bolt, these bolts on, and because they're so little, I'm going to have to put some on. In a, in a dinky, in a tiny little way. Okay, so I'm just going to dunk that one, I think. Yep. Okay, let's get these done up. Well, I've uh, managed to get the uh, bolts done up underneath on the back side of the disc. Um, torque settings were a bit odd, didn't really make much sense to me. So I just did them up as tight as I could to the uh, nearest value that there was. So, right now, let's put this back on. I'm hoping I get this right. That feels right, feels good. So next we need to get the uh, the bearings in the front. Right, so we've got the, the cap with the castle um, thing cover, the washer with a, with a slot in the side of it, and we have our, our big nut. Okay, so we're there's the tray. Okay, I prepared one of these wheel bearings earlier. There we go. Very, very thick with oil. Uh, grease even. Okay, let's lift that up and hold it in place. And let's push that on there. Like so. Let's push it into the space okay so then we have the washer so 
that on there. And then we have our nut. I'll give this a quick wipe because we want it clean. We don't really want any old grease on there, do we? Not really. Okay. Okay, what I'll do is I'll tighten that and then I'll loosen it um, as per the instructions. Brake caliper next, you won't need to see that. Okay everyone, good news. Um, I've been up here for about an hour and I managed to get the um, the bushes in, the poly bushes. There's one there, there's one there, you see them both. Uh, I trimmed that one down, I managed to get it all in, so that's good. It went in quite nicely actually, which I was quite pleased about and I didn't trim a huge amount off, so that's good. So, what I now need to do, because everything's all on this side, I need to get the wheel on this side, the wheel on the other side, and then make sure the, the, the wheels are in a straight line, and then I can put the lower um, part of the steering column on. Um, I'm just hoping I get it in the right position. I'm not too sure if I'm going to film it, because it is dark in there, so I will come back when I've got it all in. Um, sorry I can't get it, get it on film but it is quite dingy in here and I can pretty much, um, I wouldn't know where to put the camera anyway so I'll, uh, I'll come back when it's all in. Okay, so recap time. Um, as you can see, the front end is on, wings are on. But apart from that, more than that, we uh, replaced the um, ball joint cover on this side because that had split. Um, most of the running gear came off, steering rack came off. Um, cleaned it all up, painted it, put the poly bushes on. You can see it down there, look. Uh, cleaned up and repainted a replacement lower steering arm. I missed a bit of paint there unfortunately, but never mind. Um, it's not going to harm it in any way. Um, I did have a lot of trouble down there putting the bolt through the bottom of the spline where it, where it goes on and I chewed up the thread where it goes through. It's like a little clamp um, where, it goes, where it clamps around the threaded part of the lower part, the steering rack itself, the box. Um, so that was done. I replaced the steering gator on this side of the car because that was split. Poly bush on that side, of course, uh, that went on as well. Uh, I got replacement backing plates for the, the brake discs. Um, rotors had them resurfaced, replaced the bearings in the front, replaced the seals. Um, so it's and, and of course the shock absorbers. Um, unfortunately I couldn't uh, get the bolts undone for the lower arms to get the springs replaced. Um, so unfortunately that didn't happen. I have got a spare set of springs all the way back at the in the back of the garage but that's going to have to wait until another time unfortunately because today is Friday, tomorrow is Saturday and tomorrow the axle for the back end of the car should be arriving. Um, that is coming from a uh, 1600XL, if I'm correct. Uh, don't quote me. Please never quote me. <laughs> um, so everything is all in. The battery is in. One thing I'm going to do before I even start the car, I'm going to check the oil level and see what we've got. Now, for those who haven't 
seen a Pinto engine before or you're new to the channel, um, feel free to subscribe. It doesn't cost a bean. Um, the dipstick is on this side of the engine, down the side of the air pan and all these pipes. So let's get this out and have a look see what our oil level is like. Now that there, that is ideal, that's perfect. That's exactly what we need. It might look a little bit black but it's not very old. So that, that is perfect. Don't need to worry about that at all. Get that back down in there. So let's have a look at our water level, shall we? Because while TC was sat um, nose in the air, if you undid this, there's nothing showing. Let's have a look. If it is low, I'll have to get some from home. Yeah, I can't see anything in there. All I can see is the top of the fins. So uh, we will go and we will go and top that up. Um, hopefully. The engine starts. Okay. Let's bring you back a little bit. And see if we can get the old boy started. I do apologize if the camera cuts out, it does do that. There's no fuel in the, uh, the filter, so it'll take a while for the fuel to come through. Okay, we have a light. Something is blowing. And he conks out. I heard something blowing then, wherever that's coming from. That is frustrating. Let's try again, shall we? Almost caught it then. Almost. <laughs> 